All right, welcome to Modern Monday, where I take a look at a movie from the 2000s or 2010s and get a review. And this week we are looking at 2010 uh, comic book film, action comic book action film, The Losers, starring Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Chris Evans, Zoe Saldana, and Jason Patrick. Yes. So the biggest question I have about this movie is, why did I not get a sequel? Why does people hate on this movie? Uh, I have a bit of irony. So, my son and I the other day were watching the movie Push, which also stars Chris Evans, and it sparked me to show my son the elevator scene from this movie with Chris Evans and the... You know, that thing. And... So, today, I ought to pick a review. This originally wasn't the Modern Monday review, by the way. I have another movie I've been trying to do for two weeks, and I've picked different ones each time. Next week, we'll get that one, I promise. But, uh, so I random, I closed my eyes and randomly selected a movie, and it ended up being this. I said, it has to be Destiny. So this is the Modern Monday. Uh, so there's that. So, The Losers. What is the story? The story is a group of soldiers are sent in to uh, assassinate a drug uh, a drug dealer, the leader of a drug cartel. And they do so, but they find out there's children there. And they find out that this mysterious Max, who gave them the job, is going to blow up the compound. So they get the, the children out, and they get them in the helicopter. But they're told that to put the children in a the helicopter, they won't be able to leave but they're fine with that. But the hel children in the helicopter starts to fly away. But Max decides, I'm going to, you know, get rid of all witnesses. And blow up the helicopter because he thinks that the soldiers are in it. And, well, they weren't. He kills the kids. But he assumes them dead. And they fake their deaths by throwing their dog tags in the, in the rubble. But, like, they throw their dog tags. Like, there's, like they give them all to Clay, who's the leader, and he throws them all in. They all land in the exact same place. You think, for authenticity, they need to throw them in different places. But I digress. So the <coughs> whole world believes them dead. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry? The whole world believes them dead. Uh, so our team is Clay, he's the colonel, he's their leader, he's played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You have Jensen, he's the tech guy, he's got the glasses, he's also got the guns, he's played by Chris Evans. There's Pooch, he basically is their driver, but he's also some comedic relief, he's, you know, good guy, played by Columbus Short. There's Cougar, he is ammunitions, and uh, he's also their sniper, played by Oscar Gineta. And there's Roke, played by Idris Elba, who is just a backup man. Now, four months pass before they meet, for a mysterious woman named Aisha comes to Clay for help in taking down Max. He agrees, and they decide to go on this mission to take Max down. And that includes invading... CIA headquarters to get information. The villain Max is played by Jason Patrick, by the way. Uh, so, this invasion of CIA headquarters is my favorite part of the movie. It's the elevator scene. It's where, you know, you Chris Evans come in and he's pretending to listen to music on his headphones. A singer in a smoky room. Smell a wine and cheap perfume For a smile they can share the night It goes on and on and on and on Singing bad on purpose, by the way. And he's in the elevator, and then he pulls his pants down. You don't see anything, of course, PG-13. And then, I don't, I'm still not sure, watching it this time, whether he was meant to get caught with his pants down or not, if he just uses that to his advantage, but he does use that as a way to get the guy out of the office so he can go in there and... Tap. But then the security guard comes, he hits the security guard with a briefcase, he runs to the other and he goes like this. And he says, they did experiments on me. 
evil experiments, anal experiments. And I have the power to kill people with my mind. And they don't believe him, they're going to handcuff him until he goes like this. And a bullet comes in, shoots two of the guys, it isn't in the chest, so they don't actually die. The other guy gets down on, on, on the ground, but he turns around and he goes like this. He goes, thanks, Cougar. And it zooms out to show Cougar on another building. And he just goes, I thought that was cool. That is cool. Uh, yeah. Um, so, a couple of things. Now, let's talk about the villain first. I think Jason Patrick is Max. He's a good villain. You see him throughout the film, but he doesn't really do much. He's trying to use these things he calls snooks. They're environmentally friendly nukes. They blow stuff up without leaving a... They're green nukes. Uh, they blow stuff up without leaving a nuclear residue. There's no fallout. It just sucks it up. He's trying to sell these on the black market. And that's his big scheme. Um, and, you know, environmentally friendly nukes. Sure. <laughs> I guess. I don't know if those could actually exist. But, yeah. So he's not a bad villain. I think Jason Patrick does a great job at playing the villain. Um, however, there are some things that happen. Like, okay, so there's a romance that shows up between Clay, because he's the main character, he's the leader of the group, and Aisha. And it just seems like, oh, we got, like, she shows up with a mission. And then all of a sudden, they're having sex, and they're in some sort of little relationship thing. And it's just like, we, like, the writer's like, oh, uh, okay, woman shows up. Uh, let's have a love, let's make her a love interest for Clay. Because she's the only woman, and he's the leader. And just kind of write that in. They're a little interesting. I don't know if that necessarily does anything other than uh, builds to the point where it's revealed that the drug dealer at the beginning of the film is her father, and she blamed Max for his death, but it was Clay who fired the bullet. So that builds to that, but other than that, not really much. She does end up being part of the group at the end of the film, but it's not, I don't know, it really goes anywhere. And also, Roke betrays the team towards the end of the film for the climax. And you're like, oh, so he was part of this the whole time. He was on their side. No. No. He didn't even know what Max looked like. Because there's a point where he, he shows up and he's like, so you're Max. I'm like, wait. So you turned on your friends. So he, he like, the whole, he had, showed that he had problems with Clay. He and Clay were always button heads. And it was because of Aisha. You know, he, he, he thought that uh, Clay was thinking was something else instead of, you know, the head down there instead of head up here, you know, then that control him. And so that's why he turned. But, like, it makes you think, like, he was on, like, he was a plant. Like, he was a part of Max's scheme the whole time, but he didn't even know who Max looked like. He wasn't even connected to this. So him turning on doesn't really do anything, and then he ends up dead anyway. And I mentioned that the villain is a good villain, but how he made... How, how about you leave him off? Uh, he escapes to a bus and then gets attacked by thugs for his watch or whatever. Yeah, that's an ending for them. The film does have a sort of, you know, turnaround. We find at the beginning that uh, Pooch's wife is pregnant. At the end, he shows up. They do this little tactical thing to get him in there which we find is just to get him into the hospital and he's like it's okay I'm the father and he's there to see his child get born you know and then uh after being mentioned earlier in the film about Jensen's niece being part of a soccer team we see them at the end and this is probably one of the funniest parts and we both funny parts both funniest both of my favorite parts of this film too with Chris Evans where he's he's yelling you know about the uh the thing they call the cyclones and this girl from the other team pushes his niece down. And he's like, okay, that's it. And he gets up and he walks out onto the field and he gets into a sort of, you know, he starts arguing with, with the, the, the referee, who's a woman, oh, like a big woman. And they're like, okay, we got to do something. They get up and they, you know, and the stars to play, don't stop believing again. And then I love this movie, man. I really do. Other than the few things that I had to say, 
a few negatives. I don't really have any more negatives. I think it's pretty good. The action is on point. I think some of the shots from the director. This is directed by Sylvan White. And that name sounds very familiar. I don't know what other movies he's directed. Uh, but his name sounds familiar. I think it does a great job with this film. I think the action is great. I think that Adding a certain music in there. There's a part where they, whoa, Black Betty, bam, 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 whoa, Black Betty, that plays, and of course, don't stop believing. Just the music cues and everything, and the score, everything is on point. I give this movie a 9 out of 10. Just those two things stop being a 10. It's a 9 out of 10. I love this movie. I don't get why there's no sequel for it. I don't get why there was mixed reviews for it. Some people said it was great, it was funny. Some people said, eh, it was meh. I think it's a great movie. I think it's one of the better comic book adaptations out there. Uh, so, yeah. What are your thoughts on the losers? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty. See you in the next one.